guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Arctic, and today we're jumping back into another episode of FTB Skies. And today we're gonna be getting busy. Hopefully, you guys are ready. Today is World Download Day, so at the end of today's episode, I'll be packaging this whole world up and providing it to you over on the Discord if you are a supporter of any tier. No matter what supporter you are, whether that is on Twitch, on Patreon, or on Discord, or even a YouTube member here, uh, you can get the world download over on the Discord. So be sure to check that out, discord.gg forward slash chosen architect, and join the Discord and get your world download today. So you may be wondering, Chosen, why do you have blocks of diamonds all around this middle area? And that's because I'm sort of waiting for more of these to convert. Inside of our quest book, uh, if we take a look down at the very bottom under overpowered, this is kind of things that we need to keep in mind and keep these items in our head uh, because, well, this is how we get some of the really nice late game items and can, can also get you some useful devices uh, that will help us um, early on as well. Um, so uh, some things that I need to do is I need to gather some of these budding amethysts. You can see right here. So 16 of them. I already have three. So I've placed down 13 more diamond blocks to go ahead and get converted. Um, and we'll use those later for sure. I'm sure almost positive I'll be using amethyst for several other tasks in the future and we can set up automation for them. But today we're going to be working on bees because another thing is honey we need to gather. A hundred buckets of it actually, which is honestly not that much honey, but it's just the fact of getting it set up and it's a good thing to get set up. And I'll tell you why. Bees are in this pack and are going to be a really nice source of some materials that are really hard to grind out. Um, now, I've created some areas up here. I've sort of uh, continued to do a little bit more building. I got the roof line sort of defined. And uh, at the moment still, I'm, I'm using ladders. I still need to uh, get more of this you know, set up. But we're going to have a way of getting up here soon. But let me go ahead and set some more ladders up here so I can pop back up um, and show you. So up top, I've gone ahead and filled this in and uh, gave myself some extra room. So we have some more space over here. And one of these areas is going to be sort of a greenhouse. Well, I guess all of them are gonna be sort of these greenhouse areas, um, but I need a space for my bees. And I think this corner is going to be a perfect spot for that. Uh, now, I do want a way to get up here. And I was looking and we could definitely put uh, a, a place right here. I think this will be a good spot. And so if I keep that in mind, this spot, I can also put another one over here. And we are going to be making elevators. Uh, pretty, pretty simple machines, honestly. Um, they just require some wool and uh, I can make a bunch of wool. Actually, I should have more than this on the wool. I guess it's because I'm getting uh, uh, from our mob farm. I'm not getting a whole lot of normal wool. I'm getting a lot of energetic sheep which uh, give this energetic wool. And I don't know if that 100% counts. Oh, also, I'm a little little full over here. These totems really do start to add, start to add up. Holy smoke. But anyways, here's our elevators. Um, so let's go ahead and place this in. And up here, uh, technically this, this needs to go a little bit higher, actually. Um, this is going to go in the main level, and we should be able to cover these up, and it shouldn't pose a problem. It's going to be really nice to be able to just pop up here. Soon we're going to get into ours, and we're going to have a way of just teleporting around, which would be kind of nice. Um, now, for this, let me get a block. We can place our elevator. So there we go. So I should now be able to hop up here and hop back and forth. Very, very clean and nice. Uh, we can also change the way this looks, so if we want to make it look like everything else, we can simply just click a block onto it. So stone is what I've been building with. Uh, I've been using a lot of this material here. And yeah, we can go ahead and place that on there. And you can see now it gets covered up and looks just like the block. Also, I've been forgetting to show you this. I just gotta make sure to pet the potato here. Now I'm thinking these areas right here, they, they probably need to be all dirt uh, because I'm planning on also having a tree farm. Uh, and so I am going to need grass on these areas. I think this might be our agricultural uh, sort of area. And then the expanse out from here uh, will go even further. Like we're going to be expanding out from this 100%. And that will leave me uh, even more room. So it'll be kind of, yeah, it'll be a nice little agricultural center. Now for these side areas, I'm going to be mixing a few different wood types over here. 
Uh, and, but notice there's a weird problem, right? Natural and these, uh, these, yeah, the natural looks kind of good, but put up against the, uh, the other materials from Chipped, there's a lot of inconsistency. So you definitely have to kind of go back and forth and mix and match to kind of find what looks good. I'm using the carpet or using the uh, carpenter stable from Chipped. And yeah, there's just some things that, uh, eh, don't, don't look so good combined together. Maybe I'll try these and see, like up against standard, standard, uh, spruce doesn't seem to really look good either. So let's try this. That's a little better. So yeah, mixing and matching your palette is a, is a good thing to do. Like it, it does look a lot better having sort of a, mi a mixed matched palette here of different textures. It does add a lot of variation to your builds. So I'm getting these all connected here and uh, we're gonna have our own little areas. I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna add a little walkway through here and just utilize the outside area, but uh, we do need to get this turned into grass and we've been farming tons of these seeds from Batania. So we have plenty of pasture seeds that we can just place in and get this whole thing turned into grass super easily. And then of course, to keep the look going, I am going to be using some framed stairs. You can see right here, it allows me to transfer these chipped block looks over, which are really, really nice. So I may have gotten a little bit carried away, just a, just a teensy bit. And I, I well, uh, I started to add on to the second layer. Um, it looks good, it looks good. I'm using these, uh, these pots here. Uh, these are from supplementaries and uh, they look really nice. They're kind of a nice window border. It's placed like directly under the window and you can see them right here as they're like setting in front of the window. Very cool. But I did set up my green area. So you can see right here, we now have our greenhouses or, or green rooms, sun rooms, whatever you want to call them. I placed green in here to sort of uh, show that off. And then we have the stained glass regular windows throughout the hallways, giving it a little bit more open space as we walk around. Of course, room for expansion, as that's why these are all open over here. So I have all of this area to play with. What are you doing up there, dude? Uh, but <laughs> bees are the things that we are going to get worked on. And I wanted to show you this glistening uh, fruit, which I've been using a little bit of it uh, to get from place to place as I was working on putting this together. Um, and so when you eat this, you get a little bit of time to fly. Uh, and the more of them you eat, um, the more time you get. I've just been using them here and there. I've only used a couple, actually. Um, it's been really helpful for just getting up to this place. Um, so anytime you needed it. But uh, it is a way of, of technically getting creative flight, and you can craft it. This was the stuff I found inside the Sky Village. Um, so I found it in the Sky Village, which is really handy because uh, it gave me about 30, th 30 some odd, um, which has been kind of helpful for this build. Uh, as you can see, I in increased the, fas the fascia on uh, the castle build that we're going uh, with a little courtyard here. And uh, man, it looks, oh God, I, I may, I'm blowing my own expectations out of the water, right? Um, and so this part of today's video is uh, is kind of under wraps, right? Uh, I think at this point we need to go get those beehives. So I'm going to need some sort of silk touch uh, to be able to collect the beehives. And if you remember, we did find areas that had beehives in them and there was bees in them ready to go. So let's go to those areas and we'll nab those things. Now I almost forgot before we do this, there's actually a book we should make called an Ender Book. And uh, this is going to be a friend to us for sure. Um, now it does, it, it shows it only has eight durability, which is kind of important to know, right? That means we're probably gonna need to get some, some sort of enchanting going so that way we can uh, get our uses out of this. Um, because we don't want to be sort of stranded somewhere and uh, this thing breaks. So as you can see, it's going to cost a little bit of ender pearls and uh, some books and some in rods. Now we actually found in rods um, in the uh, the Sky Village. So once you have yourself some in rods, you should be pretty well off. Um, so let's go ahead and get this all crafted up. This this book is fantastic. I'm, I'm excited to show you what it is because I haven't gotten to play with this book in a long time. I, I think this was like back in 112, this thing existed. So it's kind of nice to see this added back in. So, Ender Book. Now, what does this let you do? Well, it lets you store your locations. Um, and as you can see, you can, you can crouch, teleport to scroll through. So back in the day, it was a little bit different, but right here you can scroll, we can select zero, 
and let's get our uh, GPS. So it is from Cyclic. Um, so grab ourselves a GPS, or I guess four of them, right? Four GPSs. There we go. And what we can do is shift right click uh, an area like this block here, place it in the book. And now we're at location zero. So zero is in here and you can see it says the name of the dimension and all that good info. And when we right click, it should teleport us to here. Well, I mean, shift right click anyways. Um, so you have to hold shift and then right click, regular right click opens up the menu. So yeah, it teleported. As you can see, it used one of those durability counts. Now, there's a couple of ways we can restore durability in this. Um, I don't know if uh, unbreaking would help with that durability loss, but it's something to keep in mind. Now, thankfully, it just teleported us back, right? And that's what I want. I want to be able to go to these locations, grab the stuff, and then just simply teleport back instead of wasting our broom durability. Uh, you gotta love just flying on a broom. It's so peaceful. So it looks like I've made it here just in time and the sun is setting, which means the bees should be, well, in their hive, of course. Um, so I have my silk touch shovel. I know the perfect tool to use on this, <laughs> but there we go. Uh, and we do finish up the beehive section here and we get a bee spawn egg, which is gonna be super helpful. We get another bee, cause this has one bee in it. This one has one bee in it. Well, it looks like we're gonna have to breed bees until we can get a nice setup of bees going. Um, over here, I believe, is another hive area. And so it would definitely be worthwhile to pop in here and grab these hives. And then we have another area as well that I should probably get to uh, just a little bit up further. Yeah, these all have one bee in it. This is one, this has one. Oh man, just one. I mean, yeah, we're definitely gonna be breeding. Um, that's for sure. So now that I have a couple of hives or well, mostly bees, uh, we can now get back. So yeah, I, now I have this set, right? We make sure we're on zero and then shift right click and it should just teleport us. You can see the countdown starting and we're right back at our base. This is like kind of a lovely tool here. Now bees can be in incredibly finicky at times. Let's go ahead and get some, uh, let's see, tulips, just any sort of flower that we can use to breed these bees. And I removed all the flowers from the lower le level, but uh, I am afraid that we might end up with a bit of a problem down the road. Uh, we'll talk about it here soon. I mean, I, I, I don't want to cover this up just yet. Actually, let's go ahead and place this down. Uh, let's place our campfires. I'm gonna place the campfires down first. This will allow for uh, just some simple interactions with them. But if I place these right on top, we should be okay to interact with these guys. Now the bees will probably pop out of the front, just like you would expect. Uh, it is daytime, so I'm surprised, but I think they may be uh, still on their cooldown. Um, but we're gonna interact with these two in uh, some different ways. Uh, also, let's go ahead and, and spawn a bee, <laughs> and it should automatically find a home. Uh, but this is one of the problems, right? Bees can uh, wander off, and we don't have this enclosed yet. Uh, nor do we have this enclosed. Um, and I'm thinking we'd be better off if it was closed up. And so just like that, we're done. Uh, now, it is pretty dark now that uh, this is all set up here. So I could add some sparks to the walls. And that really lights this up. So it gives it some nice warm glow. And these things are invisible light sources. Um, now, I did get these from the quest, but it does look like we are going to be able to make candles. Um, it says any candle will work. And of course, candles require honeycombs or beeswax. Um, now, uh, I didn't use them all, but we have them. So the bees are ready to go. Uh, we have a couple of bees right here. Let's make sure when we can breed them. It is very important. We've got to get these things up and running. Now, one of the first things we're probably going to want to do is honestly just shear our first <laughs> our first hive. Um, we're going to need the uh, the honeycombs to be able to get more hives. Uh, so if we search up hive, we're going to be messing around with the hive harvester. And so, of course, this requires shears and this. We're going to be using a pedestal to shear and a faucet to actually collect. Uh, the honey, the raw honey itself. Now, as a part of the bee quest itself, we get some honey treats, which is kind of nice. This is a part of the resourceful bees or productive bees. Um, and we also, with a flower, 
get a beekeeper's hood. And we get a uh, neon bee spawn egg. Hmm, that's interesting. But this is kind of cool. We can put this on. And now if a bee tries to sting us, it won't be able to. So what I need to do now to get the bees up and running is I need to place down a pedestal. And uh, for right now, I'm going to place it right here. I guess I could place it really anywhere. Uh, but on the back of these hives, we're going to set up tanks. Go ahead and get the tanks placed in the back here. And I'm going to be using faucets. So faucets are going to go right onto the back. And what I can do is crank that. And it is going to drain the honey into the tank. And so technically these are automated. So anytime this fills up with honey, these will automatically place it into these basic fluid tanks, which are really simple to make. Uh, just iron and redstone. And these faucets will automate this. Now this side, once I get some more beehives, um, we are going to go ahead and set this up. So right now there's a single bee in here. Um, but we want this hive harvester to get started. Now it doesn't exactly work just by itself. So you can see it says it needs a work area or work locations. So that's kind of cool that it displays it now. Um, so if we uh, get our wireless grid here, it looks like we're going to have to charge it up. Um, but if we uh, make one of these, it's, it's not too difficult to set up. So let's go ahead and get the work area crafted. Now it's going to tell you that you're going to need this work uh, tool. And this is actually one of the main tools that you should already have on you. Uh, from the pedestals mod, which is this yellow tool. And if you shift right click, you can swap to the work tool and then we can make the uh, the area. And I think the area is going to be the best one to to make. So let's go ahead and make the area. There is another version that will let you like specify specifically like the single block you want to work on. But for us, we'll be fine with just the area. So if you go back up here, um, I'm actually going to define a work area without having the blocks in place. So let me place a block of silver or any building block right here. And I'm going to click or shift click, point selected, and then shift click here. And now this is my work area. And so I should be able to put this upgrade in. And now it knows that this is its work area. And I think a way to visualize this is to just right click. Oh, no, that does not sort that visualizer. I think, though, the items should go into this pedestal. And so we might be able to get away with just putting a barrel right here and a hopper um, for right now. It'll be really hard to see unless we can speed this up in some way. Um, so a barrel and just a regular hopper. You know, I, I can use a wooden hopper. Why not? It's incredibly fast. Um, so barrel. And we'll get a hopper underneath that. So when this harvest, it should just harvest um, with the shears, as if I was using a shear on it. Um, if you put bottles in this, it would actually pull the bottle of honey out, which is kind of an interesting way of automating with pedestals. Now, while our bees are processing, and they're doing a really good job, by the way, I did switch this to a, a regular hopper. I was experiencing some weird issues, thinking that uh, it wasn't hoppering, even though it definitely was hoppering. Uh, don't use your magnet around it. Otherwise, you'll end up collecting the items because it kind of like uh, drops it on itself, sort of. And that goes into that hopper. Um, so, yeah, it is shearing. It is working as we do have the honeycombs here. Um, and our bee population is slowly but surely growing. Um, I'm still in the process of, of getting them all grown up. When we have our next night, uh, that should work. I did close this in as well to make it a little bit easier to farm these. Now... While they're doing their thing, let's go ahead and set up a new villager. So we place this in and place a lectern. Now up top, I can cycle through the trades. And so we can actually roll through here and find the perfect enchanting book. You can even bind this to a keybind if you want to cycle through it really fast. But we're looking for mending. Um, and so mending looks like this. Uh, looks like a blank book. And so we could actually scrub through here pretty quick to try and find mending. It looks like it has a back, uh, uh, like a blackish sort of uh, binding with a red strap. And so we should be able to scrub through pretty quickly to be able to find exactly what we're looking for. Mending is honestly pretty easy to, uh, to get your hands on. It took me about 15 minutes or so of just rolling to finally get it. There are a lot of books that actually look very similar to mending, um, like sharpness and stuff like that. But there we go. 
so we have it and we also got looting three i mean those are really good trades um so grab some emerald and uh books and if we just buy it off uh we'll make sure that those trades will stay the same uh we really just need to buy one book but i did want a mending villager um so let's go ahead and just buy the looting off and then what we can do is i believe we can pull this villager out and if we have an anvil uh we should be able to name it like mending and then we can you know kind of identify what we have going on here. So we have ourselves a mending villager. When I put this in here, uh, you can see when we pull it back out, it's still called mending. So I can make a bunch of different villagers and have them named and keep them in my storage. And anytime I need to pull them out, I can just simply right click to pull them out. And it's uh, I know exactly what books this thing gives. So I should probably name it what mending and looting mending looting. There we go. Mending Looting Villager. Very nice. And now this one I would say took even longer, but I did manage to roll an Unbreaking 3, which is uh, very nice. Oh my goodness. Um, so, we should now have everything we need. Oh goodness, a zombie horde has arrived. I love this sword, by the way. It just, it just annihilates. It is crazy that we found in that chest. Um, so, paper. There we go, and we'll get our book. Now, I wanna get an enchanting area set up, so this will be kind of important after we get our books set up here. So, I always love to get myself a, uh, a Mending Villager and an Unbreaking Three Villager. It's, it's like really important to get those two. So, let's go ahead and name. Unbreaking. Perfect. So, we have ourselves an Unbreaking, uh, but now we really need to get ourselves. Um, a way of managing our experience and down here of course our mob farms they produce all of this experience right so we have experiences generated here and the majority of our experience is generated here with this almost completely filled uh, so we need to send this somewhere and uh, how, how about just into us right we can just have that experience go into us now a super easy way of doing that is with an XP tap and uh, if we just tap this onto the side, we can start to drain XP onto us. Uh, there's many other ways that we can do this as well. Um, there's also an obelisk. So there's an XP obelisk that allows us to also store XP. And uh, oddly enough, we can just have this go next to it. And it's actually draining the XP out of here and putting it into here, which I find very interesting. You can increase the radius, uh, shorten it, uh, do whatever you want to do. But this allows us to quickly go, hey, I want 10 levels, right? Um, so I can just pull 10 levels exactly out, which is, I would say, a little faster than this method. So I am back to the pedestal and notice that, uh, well, it is just shearing and actually not depositing into our chest like I thought it was going to. Um, so... What I'm going to have to do is use a collector to be able to actually collect this in this area and then it should put it all into a chest. And so you may be familiar with this item collector. It works, you know, just like everything else. It's going to keep this in the storage and I shouldn't need any other thing for this. So that should work. So we have our collector set up. Uh, I could have used a pedestal magnet. There's also that. That's an option. Uh, but it seems like it was kind of spitting the items out here and out to the front. Um, so I think this is going to work just fine. And uh, we can change our direction, actually. I do want this, I think, on up. So when we increase the height, I, just in case it lands on top, make sure the height is high enough to be able to collect. And there we go. So now um, our... Uh, our honeycombs should end up inside of the item collector. Sometimes it's all about trial and error and you have to kind of wait for bees to sort of do their thing. Uh, that is what, you know, what it takes. It is a little bit of a long haul on bees and so that's why I'm getting them started as soon as I can. I actually just realized the cleric sells these glistering chorus fruit. I didn't, I didn't even know it sold those. Um, th that just gives us even more flight. Holy smokes. And they're rel they're pretty cheap. Now I've gone and set up a little bit of an enchanting area. Now you need 15 bookshelves to sort of get started. And uh, we have some things to worry about. We have Eterna, Quanta, and Arcane, uh, Arcana. Um, 
and we have to worry about these. Now, to increase them, we have some inc uh, some better bookshelves that we can use later on, uh, and they get increasingly more difficult to uh, to set up um, the further on we go, um, and going to require things from the nether and things from the end and things like that. But right now, we should be pretty well set up to just get a, get these things enchanted, right? I want Silk Touch on the Flux Bore, and we want efficiency on these, and I think it's a good starting point to at least get those uh, basic enchants on here with an enchanting table. Now, I did do some clearing out of this area. We're going to leave this for right now. I'm not going to show you what's going on over there. It's a little bit of a work in progress, but uh, for right now, let's go ahead and see what we can't enchant. So, it is showing us 26. I should have one, two... Oh, I bet these up top are probably not allowing this to work. Hmm. You gotta love running into problems because you get to solve them. So there we go. So now this should be a full level 30 enchant. You can see holding is something that's really important that can go in here. That's going to increase the amount of RF this can actually store. Um, by default, that looks like a pretty good enchant, but we'll see. So this had fortune and holding, not exactly what I want on here, to be honest. So I can just pull that right back off and we can throw some other things at it. For example, efficiency. Well, it's not the efficiency I want. Um, so we're going to keep trying. And uh, when we need more levels, all I got to do is just hit receive and we can start receiving more of these levels. We should have plenty of plenty of levels. I'm wanting silk touch and efficiency. We may have to grind out an efficiency villager. Hopefully we get something nice. So this is holding the fortune. Fortune is an enchant that I just don't want. So we're gonna have to keep going until I get silk touch. So after a bit of grinding, you can see I've went through almost all of my lapis. Um, I ended up getting efficiency soulbound and holding, efficiency soulbound and holding. I will take that and we can just roll a, uh, a, a silk touch villager. And there we go, Silk Touch himself. Very nice. Go ahead and get Silky in here. There we go. So we have good old Silky at our fingertips. Um, and uh, we should be able to buy a couple of these. And all I have to do is apply it. And I think these are nearly perfect tools. So today was a bit of an unbelievable day. Honestly, it was a, it was a lot of fun. As you can see, things are working. We have all of our honey that is starting to build up as we just work on other things, and that's going to only continue to grow and should allow us to get into the productive bees, which is going to be super fun later on down the road and really, really helpful. Uh, our bees are slowly but surely filling up. It looks like we now have enough bees because there's two sitting out here. All of these are filled up and we have a single slot. So we have an extra bee now. Very nice. So these are all completely filled up, nice and bred. And uh, looks like our honeycombs are building up and we're going to need a bunch of honeycombs. But with that, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and uh, I hope you uh, click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and also give this video a huge thumbs up. Uh, I really appreciate it. I hope to see you guys, of course, in the next episode, and it's time now to thank the supporter of today's video. And that huge thanks is going to go to... Pika, sir. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord. Becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. Now, keep in mind, if you are a supporter of any tier, including on the Patreon and uh, and over here on YouTube, if you're a YouTube member, all you gotta do is hop on that Discord and get your world download. I will be packing all of this up right after this episode and uh, presenting it in a nice, easy to download format. So, guys, I hope to see you over on the Discord and uh, I hope to see you also over on Twitch twitch.tv forward slash chosen architect be sure to follow me over there i do live stream all the time every week so check that out i hope to see you guys in the next episode and of course behave and as always thanks for watching according to all known laws of aviation there is no way a bee should be able to fly its wings are too small to get its little fat body off the ground.